Hello everyone and welcome to today. today's lunchtime learning. Uh, my name is Lisa Shaw and today we are going to be focused on resizing designs and in particular shrinking them. In Brilliance Essentials has a stitch processor. What this means is that when you take a design, a stitch file, a PES, a JEF file, any format, and you make it either larger or smaller, the stitches are processed automatically by the by Embrilliance Essentials, and it res when you resize it, the densities is the stitches are recalculated to match the original density. Now, that's all fun and, and great. So, but what happens is what if you want to shrink your designs? Enlarging and shrinking are something that we want to do in our customizing software. Um, however, if you take a five by seven design that has 45 colors in it or 30 colors or 20 colors and you shrink it down to a four inch size, it's still going to have all those different color breaks. And so it's something that you have to think about when you are resizing, especially when shrinking, because things that are set in the software, such as underlay, can't be changed on a stitch processor resizer. All it does is recalculate stitches based upon it. Now, some designs don't resize well at all, and that's because they really don't have densities. So a stitch processor has nothing to recalculate. Some of the styles, for example, would be sketch designs or outline style or still stippling or quilting designs. Some sort of crazy things happen when you resize them. So let's pop on into the software and we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do when shrinking your designs. Because like, um, when I talk about shrinking, I'm already thinking that we have taken a design, such a sketch design that has a low density, which would work really well for shrinking. So let's pop on into the software and see what that's all about. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have my design page open here and I'm going to go and open a design such as this cute little egg trio from the It's Just Stitch. Now, when I have this design open, open on my screen and I'm thinking I want to shrink this to a three inch design size, it makes sense because it has a low density. It has only a few colors in the design. So making it significantly smaller, 20%, 25% smaller, isn't that big stretch of an information of a stretch of pushing the software to the limits. It should work. However, Looking at this design, when you do shrink it, so a couple things to pay attention to. I know I want to make this three inches. How do I know what size the design is now? I look at the bottom of my screen and it tells me the size of my design. So it's about, oh, one and a half inches tall by four inches wide. So making it an inch narrower isn't that big of a deal. So I'm going to take my co corner here. I'm going to grab the corner and I'm watching the numbers up here in the top. I'm going to grab the corner, bring it in until the width number becomes three inches. Looks perfectly fine on the screen while I have my mouse cursor held down. However, when I release the mouse cursor, this is where you see some of the densities got a little bit discombobulated, the stitches. And that's because it's such a light density. It didn't it's software, we pushed it too far. It didn't know what to do with that. It tried to readjust it, which would be perfectly fine in a normal fill because those that wouldn't really be noticeable if this had a four point density fill, but because it's sketch, it's got lighter density fabric showing through and it, it may kind of makes a mess. So what can we do? I'm going to undo by putting my mouse cursor up here at the top and undo the last action bringing me right back here to normal. I'm going to use one of the keyboard. It's not a shortcut, it's a control. So I have my item selected and on Windows, I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard. On Mac, it's the command key. So this key, the command control key, turns off your stitch processor. The number of stitches in your design is shown here at the bottom. So when you turn off 
the stitch processor, that number of stitches will not change. So you can actually shrink this or enlarge it, either direction, by at least 20% without having much consequences. The reason I know that is because I've done test sews. How will you know that? You'll do test sews. Test sews are the teacher of all, all things machine embroidery. But let, before I digress, I'm holding down the control or command key on my keyboard. I'm watching this number here just to see what it says. I'm watching the number up here in the top because I want to make it three inches. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button on the corner and drag it in until it says three inches. Release my mouse button. And do you see it still says 3958? So the number of stitches has remained the same. And when we zoom in close, you can see that it's retained the original nice gradient fill sketch density. The only thing it did was it made the stitches closer together. So that's why it's okay to shrink a design while not reprocessing the stitches with a sketch design because the stitches are already further apart. Try that little tip on your sketch, your quilting, stippling designs, motif fills. Same thing. These are, th these are the type of designs that work really well for holding down the control or command key on your keyboard while you're resizing. So the number of stitches does not change. Now, so that's one way of resizing. Let's go to a new design page. I'm going to open up a different type of design. So this is a typical filled design that I have here. The number of stitches is 16,676. But let's take a look at this design to, to learn something about it before we start doing anything with it. Okay, so we, it's always a good idea to get familiar with the stitches before you say, hey, let me shrink this down and, and pop it in. I'm going to run my stitch simulator here. So I'm clicking on the little arrow and I'm just going to grab the slider bar and go through the design and watch it stitch. Ah, right away from the get-go, I can see that it is in stitching color number one, and you see it put underlay going in one direction, underlay going in another direction, and then the fill stitch on top. This has some significant underlay in it at a 4 by 4 design so that it can stitch properly. That's just the way it was digitized. So shrinking this on each one of those making it smaller isn't going to remove all that extra underlay. It's simply going to make it smaller and reduce the density of the fill stitch. And you could end up with a super duper bullet point proof design at smaller. Now let's just see what the software does. I have 16,000 stitches. I'm going to select it and I'm going to make it as small as I can. That's I dragged it up until the upper right corner and made it as small as possible. It shrunk it down to almost 50% of the size. It took out 4,000 stitches, which is a decent amount of stitching, but we saw the underlay and we know, wow, first of all, this is only a two inch design now. So it's really tiny. Does it really need 11 colors in a two inch design? Could we use this maybe say on a little a John John or a jumper as a cute little, or a burp pad as a little two inch design without all those extra colors, because at two inches, those little dots are really tiny. They're, do we really need that? What we, the outline is perfectly fine. What if we say, well, we really like that shape, but we don't need all that fills. We can go through here and do you see the colors that are listed here on the side? I can go through and select and delete the extra color changes of the fill stitches that I don't want. I simply click on the color and hit the delete key on my keyboard. If you know there's a whole slew of colors you don't want, I can select the first one by left clicking on it, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and click on the last color in my object list and hit the delete key. And now I have Still a cute little baby buggy here that has a little bit of extra swirls. It's not just blah boring. And 
it's going to stitch a whole lot better. If I hit the A key on my keyboard to zoom into all stitches, it, this is my two inch design. I can see it's it's still my two by two design. It has 4,000 stitches, which is gonna stitch a whole lot nicer. And it has a little bit of detail that's actually gonna show up and be noticeable. If you wanted it to be all one color, or you wanted the, the swirls here are an accent color, if you want them to be black, you can simply change the colors in your design here. One thing to notice is that this design actually had this green twice in the design and it was there for layering purposes. However, because we removed the other colors that were underneath, it's gonna stitch those two greens one right after each other and because they're the exact same thread number and thread color, the software will combine them together so this design's actually only three colors. You want it to be all one color, click on the one color button and it will make it one color. So much that you can do to customize and still use this design just at a smaller size. So that's a few of the tips and tricks I thought I would pop in and talk to you about resizing your designs. Make sure that you do test cells because once you change your design in the software, you will want to make sure that what the choices you made were appropriate for the design you chose. And we all learn by doing our test sews. Thanks for joining me today during lunchtime learning. Remember that there are a whole other bunch of other videos on these short topics available for you to watch and review on our YouTube channel, Lunchtime Learning Playlist. Take care and have a wonderful afternoon.